clubs, form that gives a problem to the successor to Arthur. Alan Birch in 1980. Until Jack Lester had his second successive 20 goal season, I considered Birch the most talented player I'd seen in my 30 odd years watching town. People can come and make offers, but Chesterfield Football Club don't want to sell. Of course, 1980 is rare, but here are a few examples of him in in support, asking for it, but he doesn't give it in. Here he is on match of the day, becoming the only Chesterfield player to score a league goal in a featured match. Briscoe. This one at Craven Cottage was one of 22 in the league in 1980-81. Alan Walker, Alan Birch, and it's there, but it came surely off a defender. Birch with that shot inside the six-yard box, but it seemed to come off a defender before it finally beat Peyton. In a period where we regularly bested Sheffield United, Birch was usually involved. His cross, Moss's header, and a finish by Bonnyman. He scored in the FA Cup game that season. Not the one called offside under 80s rules, but the last minute penalty in front of the Blaze fans. We of course won the replay. Run for goal and ended up on the ground. John McPhail went on his knees to protest, but his prayers weren't answered. And with almost the last kick of the match, Birch kept Chesterfield in the cup. A draw was probably the best reflection of the game. The two sides will try to get a result at Chesterfield tomorrow night. Birch's tally of goals was the more remarkable as he wasn't a striker. Rather, he was a right winger who exercised a free role. Either all the big boys are up there coming in is Birch. And nobody saw Birch at all. And he really ought to put that one in the back of the net. Oh. We all saw, all watching, the four big men clustered around the goalkeeper. And little Alan Birch coming in on the back post, totally unmarked. Open goal and puts it over the top. Sterk stabbing it forward to Birch. Unlike many goal scorers, including Leicester, Birch could also be credited with a lot of assists. That's not to say, like the best goal getters, he couldn't be a greedy beggar at times. However, here he helps Moss when he only gets his hat trick at Walsall. Baines too often, but when he has, he has punished Walsall. It's 3 2. As they wait on the back post. And that's Moss. Green lost it, the chip cut in again from Birch, and that's surely it! No, there's an offside play. This coverage was on ATV in the Midlands. Walker going in, now Salmons to knock it way across there again, looking for Birch. And that must be another one. And Moss is claiming that as his hat-trick. It's 4-3. 44 minutes gone, we've got a minute left. Can Chesterfield still pull something out of this game? Walker here, the ball wide, Salmons knocks it far post, looking for Birch, and now we look for Moss getting the touch, his hat-trick this afternoon. I thought his best game was in the 3-0 romp against Colchester. Stuart Basson said he played as if touched by the gods. However, with the lack of coverage, this effort against Wall Millwall comes a close second. I see helping him, and Birch leaves them both. Is there a gap for him at the near post, but here's Stark! And touchdown by Bonnyman. The goal is given, and after the scramble, the final touch was from Bonnyman. So, only 12 minutes before the Chesterfield supporters can raise their arms in triumph. Well, it was a real scramble after John Sturk. Had his shot blocked. Crawford was right in there, and it rolled invitingly to Bonnyman. One 0 to Chesterfield. Chesterfield's home record was the real cornerstone of their excellent season last year when they finished fourth. They've beaten twice at home all season. Alan Birch almost illuminating the afternoon with an effort that had class written all over it. The goalkeeper of Jackson's experience not to be caught out, wasting no chance, seeing the goalkeeper just off his line and trying to lock.
love him. This match was the main game on ITV Yorkshire's regional coverage. Blythe's header. Perhaps that near miss by Millwall will spark some life into Chesterfield. Here's Bonnyman, Crawford, and Moss. And he breaks for Birch. So Alan Birch ends a barren spell in front of goal. Bonnyman beautifully reversing it to Crawford. It breaks here for Ernie Moss. Jackson out quickly to block the first effort, but he had no chance of recovering as Birch banged it home. In the end, the long throw is almost as good as a corner in the shape of Bonnyman. But they left Birch, and that could be costly for Millwall. Alan Birch now really showing all the package. Superb goal. Can the Football Association ask players not to show their delight after scoring a goal like that? Alan Birch, the mistake was Millwall's in leaving him unmarked at the throw, and that impish little shimmy and burying it inside the near post. So he gets two goals inside three minutes. Birch with a chance of a run at Robinson. Birch was sold to all Rampton Wanderers for almost £200,000 after he failed to get promotion that season. We did struggle to get the money, however, after Wolves went into administration. 4-3, and here's Gary MacDonald. And is that the save that's going to take Chesterfield through to the next... Birch returned in 1983 for £45,000, but wasn't really a John Duncan-type player. He did take his goal tally to 50, and here scores the winning penalty in the League Cup against Middlesbrough. John Duncan sold Birch to the Millers for 25,000, and there he got another 30-odd goals in two seasons. Alan Birch started in a truly exceptional team, where he was just the best of a great bunch. I think Leicester has done his work with less talent around him. That means that Jack edges ahead, in my estimation, as well as in the goals tally. However, both have been a joy to watch.